My friend, Greg, no, Herb, <laughs> Herb Keener, <laughs> we practiced it 20 times, Herb Keener is here, he's an author, Yes. A and you wrote a book. Yes. And uh, tell us a little bit about it, let's just jump right into it. Yeah, the book is just about, from the time I was a youngster uh, in a city called uh, Oakeyville in Stockton, Stockton, that's where everybody migrated to in the 30s. and. My dad left when I was four years old. My mother raised three children. I was one of the worst, and uh, I was always into things. And, I, and when I grew up, I continued to get involved with things that uh, isn't normal. And I ended up, through a connection, going to be a drug runner from Mexico to uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. That's your uh, career choice. Somehow. Yeah, that was a career choice. Yeah. That, and I'd been a lot of things before that, so, and the promise of big money, and uh, so probably I dove in. Probably could have been big money. It would have been big money, or I'd have been dead, more yeah. likely dead. Right. But uh, I just looked at it like an opportunity to grab a lot of money very quickly. Uh, we delivered, the last delivery was $90,000 worth, and that was only uh, about 90 pounds, and... Uh, the next trip was going to be 3,000 pounds. So you had to go from Mexico? No, we from Modesto. They took it from Mexi they, Mexico to Modesto, and that's, that was my pickup point. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but the very next time, I was supposed to go to Mexico and go from there to here. Mm. And it was even getting more. I put my family in danger without even realizing it, because yeah. when you're working for people that syndicated a drug program, uh, they, they, are, they are not very uh, lenient in anything that you do. They're pretty serious. Yeah, and you, so I put a lot of people in danger I didn't even know, yeah. and, and, and myself also. But the book's all about me growing up, making that decision, and, and uh, getting caught up running in the swamps of Tennessee. Mm -hmm. It's a hilarious, it's a really hilarious now, but at the time it wasn't so hilarious. Yeah. But, I went from uh, uh, actually a few little cities around. I ended up in Sweetwater, Tennessee, mm. and uh, with a motel room. And the drug folks found out that it was there, and all the drugs is in my truck. And uh, they said, "Well, old Herb is uh, stealing our." He's going to steal it. They yeah. thought you're going to steal not, it. Not thinking it out clearly, because if you're going to steal. Ninety thousand dollars worth of pot. It would be better to steal it in your hometown, yeah. where it, where where I had it, and so I don't drive two thousand miles to steal something in a place I don't know where it's at. <laughs> so they didn't think that out, Rugga. But I give credit to God for that one. Uh, so anyway, they took it out and got it, and but I still ended up in the swamp. Uh, but they never come to arrest me. They never. But when they arrested the big guys, they they backed off of me mm. and then uh, so they knew you had it and they were watching you or something the cops they were they had a room on each side of my oh motel my room gosh. and then <laughs> the bad guys came and took the pot yes took the marijuana yeah now you don't have it yeah now i don't have the cops it. are watching ready to arrest you yes and well you they they were waiting for me to lead them to somebody oh I see. Well, what they don't know the rules that people in a syndicated program like that they gave me one phone number to call i called it and I flushed it. Well, the undercover agent that had been there for three years, when he questioned me, I said, well, I can't get a hold of him. Well, then he couldn't transfer the blame on me, mm -hmm. so he was in trouble. Yeah. And that's when I tried to run again. Mm -hmm. I went all through. Uh, did another run. I did another, I went on my run. I was out in the swamps, I lost my glasses. The next day I had to go back and find them. I used to have to wear glasses since I was 13, but mm. I've had an operation where I don't have to. But the whole thing is about when I first started writing this book, I thought, wow, this is just an entertaining thing. But then I let my daughter-in-law read a transcript about two years ago. She said every teenager in the world ought to read this mm. because I felt all the agony I had put on my mother oh boy. through that whole time. Yeah. And I didn't see that aspect until she said that. And I went back, read page for page, mm -hmm. and I said, oh, my goodness, how true that is. If these disobedient kids now could realize who they're hurting and right. what they're doing. So that gave me even a, 
uh, more of a drive to finish the book. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's about all those things. And when, like I say, when I went to commit suicide, because I didn't want to do a whole bunch of time in Tennessee prison, yeah. uh, this it was like hot oil from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. And this voice said, now that you've decided to die, you'll have the strength to live. Mm. I got a peace that I never felt in my entire life. At that time, I was 43 years old. Mm. And uh, so when I got back home, finally, a couple weeks later, a month, whatever it was, <clears throat> I flew into San Francisco. And I just kind of said, well, that's it. I, that's my, my guess. And then all of a sudden, that same voice just kept pushing me and driving me to go to a church, which I'd never... I never dealt with church. Cross your mind, huh? Nah, it didn't not even at all. Cross your mind, huh? <clears throat> but I went into this church, and I said, "Lord, you got to give me a sign." Mm -hmm. So I opened up this door, and a voice inside there, a guy I used to go to school with, was a minister, and I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. He said, "Herb Keener, come on in." Herb Keener. I said, "Now there's a sign." <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good sign. I met my wife there. Mm -hmm. Nine days later, we got married. And we've been married 34 years now. A lot of things fell in place for you. like boom, Yes, boom, boom. it started wow. just falling in place. I opened up a ministry called Crossroads uh, in 1988. We pulled a lot of people off the streets that really, really were headed in the same direction I was. Mm -hmm. And uh, we considered that very successful. Yeah. Then I pastored the church for five and a half years. I consider that a bigger job than what I did in Tennessee. Yeah. It's a pretty <laughs> but, big job running a yes. church. So. so anyway, now I, I'm just looking. I, I just consider myself the luckiest guy in the world. Yeah. I, I got a so. good woman to spend the rest of my life with. Here's the cover of the book, Decision to Die, Strength to Live. Uh, yeah. By the way, where, where can people get that? You said they maybe 40,000 places. We're going <laughs> yeah. to list them off real right quick. Now, right now you can get it at fryersonpress.com, but you can get it on Amazon. You can get it on Barnes & Noble. I looked them up before I come today. And uh, I mean, on, is it already for pre-order? You could pre-order it there? Yeah, you'd have to pre-order it. Yeah, it's coming out in, what, a couple weeks? Yeah, it should be about two weeks. Uh, when I was on the last time, I said two weeks. Then my publisher called me and told me, hey, three to five weeks to five, yeah. so that's been two or three weeks now. let's say a few weeks well you'll know because he's going to come back when it comes out we'll do a big yes, a splash over hand. it so but you go check it out now on amazon right right you can go on amazon you can go on uh barnes and noble uh, just and any your, of the bookstores is your website up yet and my website is up but we are right now in uh changing uh the program the minute we get the book uh it'll be on my website for sale okay that's exciting. So Now, uh, a wise man once said anybody could write a book, but very few can finish writing a book. And oh, you no. did that. Oh, man, and that was tough. You finished it, huh? Oh, the yeah. worst thing, I tell you, I, 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 I was always a good starter and never finished anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But once my daughter-in-law told me about that, that gave me that last little new energy little, to, new to look at it. Huh? If I could help one guy, mm -hmm. one person, from not having to go through what I was. And it's all about who they're connected to. The parents need to be knowing who they're hanging with because see, my mother didn't have the energy or the, the technology to keep up with me. Yeah. Yeah. So people need to know what, who their kid's hanging with. And what period was this, the uh, 80s, the 70s? Yeah, yeah it was, that was, it was uh, 1983. Okay. And uh, that was, it was in about March of 83. And uh, I got saved December 6, 1984. Mm -hmm. It's five o'clock in the afternoon, and uh, then I got married in February uh, the seventeenth of eighty-five. Okay. So uh, my life started getting on track. It didn't mean everything went away because I've had a terrible, terrible last thirty years. But yeah. but it's the end that counts. Yep. It's not the beginning is great, but the ending is even better. How many years were you in this drug running business? I was a newly, I was newly into it. That was a, you're just getting into they it. took a, they took over a year to test me mm. to be sure I wouldn't steal anything from or do it. I mean, in the book, it explains all that. Every time they tested me, it was just, a, I felt it was the dumbest thing in the world. Why is this guy doing this? And 
then after I qualified, it took about a year. After I qualified, then he explained everything that he had done. Just to test you. Yeah. And even after that, they still thought you were going to steal it. And still does. So the, you know, when <laughs> you paranoid. when you're crooks, you think everybody else yeah. is crooks. And were you moving it in a big rigs or just your car? Oh or? no, just a car and stuff for, at first. Yeah. But they wanted to get to the point of doing three thousand pounds a week. Wow. That was millions and millions yeah. of dollars. Right. See, I, my my eyes just registered yeah. like a cash register. You know, yeah. I said, oh my gosh, I hit the jackpot. Yeah. And yeah. I did all right. Yeah. Do you ever get paid out a little bit? Did ever what? Get paid out a little bit on. Oh, I got paid quite a bit. Yeah, okay. But it wasn't worth it. No, no. Because <laughs> more than likely, I'd be, I wouldn't be here now. I'd be dead if I continued on. All right, tell us the name of the book again. Decision to Die, Strength to Live. And tell us the website, your website address. HerbKeener.com. HerbKeener.com. That's easy. HerbKeener.com. Uh, if you didn't write it down or you're, some people are listening in their car now yeah. to our shows, you can call me here at CentralValleyTalk.com. I'll give you the website. Or I'll give you a Herb's direct number. I don't care. Yeah. And, uh, but it's coming out. Uh, uh, say the name one more time. Herb Keener. Decision to Die, Strength to Live by Herb Keener. is coming out in a couple of weeks. We're just going to say a few weeks. Yes. When it's out, it's out, all right? Yes, it's going to be about the 10th of July, I would imagine. Anything else you want our viewers to know? No, then it's every word of that in that book is true, no matter how outlandish it might sound. All right, very good. We'll be back with more Mike and Athena Live right after this.